Beware of opposite color bishop positions because all it takes is one tactic or one attack by your opponent to lose the game. And you be trying so hard, like you, you do a couple exchanges, you don't ever think about it until you're in that type of position. And then you realize something. You realize that, oh snap, my light squares are looking pretty dangerous right now because I only got a dark square bishop. It's really important to attack the opponent when you have these opposite color bishops, and this is the reason why. Let's go into the game right quick. So this is one of the games that I wanted to show you is Jose Campoblanca. One of the best in-game strategists in the whole entire world. And this game was played in 1919. And of course the opponent name is unknown because this was a Simo game where he demonstrated how to play against your opponent if they have a complex of squares that are weak around their king. So let's get started into it. The game started like this. E4, E5, knight to F3, knight to C6, knight to C3, A6, D4. D4 going into a three knights opening because they are opening up the center and there are three knights only developed. Black is gonna have to do something about it. And of course, back in 1919, not everybody was very, um, not everybody knew about the opening that much. And so we got this very, very ugly move F6, which is basically already losing for the black pieces. But in human standards, they just didn't know. There is no stockfish back then, there's no Komodo. And so after the move F6, of course you gotta take that pawn. You got to take that pawn in case they take back and then maybe we can get that um, queen to h5 um, move in. Like for example, f takes on e5 and then maybe we can take advantage of this, but it doesn't work right now. The best move is actually doing the move bishop to c4 and just cutting down this diagonal. The opponent cannot castle kingside anymore. So after the move bishop to c5, bishop c4, they do e6, basically gambiting off a pawn against one of the best grandmasters of their time. After the move, e takes on d6, bishop takes, castle king side, knight to e5. So one thing that stronger players do is that since they know that maybe they're going to be losing in this position, especially out of the opening, they like to trade pieces. And usually when you trade pieces, you kind of get out of that bad opening a little bit. But look at the strategy what happened here in this position. We have this next move, which was knight takes pawn takes which this is exactly what we was looking for and now this queen h5 move is very present in the position knight to e2 knight to e2 the thing about knight to e2 is that knight to d5 was a little bit better but knight e2 the goal is very simple jose Campoblanca wanted to get this knight on the f5 square or the h5 square because now there's a whole lot of light squares that are weak in his position after the move knight to f6 knight g3 Remember, black can never castle because of this bishop and that's on this a2 to g8 diagonal. After this move, knight to f5, bishop takes, pawn takes, and now not only is white's light square is very weak around the king side, but white has this double bishop advantage. And the double bishop advantage is better than any other coordination of pieces like the two knights or the bishop and knight because the two bishops can get more space into the position. And so after queen e7, bishop e6, bishop c7, bishop g5, not only can black castle king side, but now they can even castle queen side. And I already know they don't want to do the move rook to d8. Because even though that is attacking the queen, after the queen moves to like a, a good square, like let's say this actually happens, and this queen moves to f3, where is this king actually going? And is this king actually good on the e8 square? It's not, because we could just put our rook on the d file, exchange their only good rook, and then all four of our pieces is going to be attacking their king. After the move bishop to g5, h6, and anybody would have did the move h6 here just to get rid of that bishop. But this is actually a big weakness and it's really hard to play for the black side because after bishop takes on f6, g takes on f6, queen h5, like I said. After the opponent does the move h6, queen h5 just becomes more powerful. And that was a bad arrow. But queen h5 becomes more powerful. King f8. After the move rook a to d1, the opponent resigned here because... There's too many weaknesses in the black camp. This g6 and f7 square is very weak. The only thing that's keeping black from not being checkmated is this queen on e7. So this queen has to stay guarding this f7 square. So moves like rook 
D8 is even bad for the opponent because that's the only active piece that they have and they white could just capture that rook and guess what happens here they can't capture with the queen because of queen f7 which is checkmate and if they capture with the bishop here just do rook d1 and now our main idea is eventually doing rook to d7. Campo Blanca has always been a legend and his games were very instructional and that's why he became the best player of his time. We will be going over more games of his on this channel, so make sure that you subscribe.